What's going on YouTube? It's Tom here. We're back with another video today. Uh, today's actually going to be a live stream, so this is for anybody seeing it after the fact because we don't have anybody in the chat right now. Um, we're going to wait till people get in the chat here to kind of explain what's going on. Should have a bunch of you guys hopping in. Everyone seemed pretty excited on Instagram, so we're just going to give it a few minutes. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what we're getting into today. Some of you guys that follow me on Instagram already saw it. We're going to be doing some live sharpening. Um, on these brand new Veneve OCB Diamond Waterstones. Going to give them a, a shot. What's going on, BJ? Um, just got these in the mail today. And first, before we get into that, I'm going to kind of go over some stuff that I bought because I'm trying to get a little bit more into uh, freehand sharpening and I wanted some more quality abrasives. I've had these DMT stones for a really, really long time and have been using those freehand if I ever want to. What's going on, Paul? And they work well. I just wasn't too happy with the edges that I was getting off of them. They seem kind of raggedy, um, not quite as refined as what I would like. So I'm hoping that these Veneve stones do a little bit better. So uh, I bought some stuff along with these Veneves to try and, you know, get me a little bit more into freehand, some stuff that I didn't have before. Uh, first thing that you see is this nice little stone tray, or they call it like a dish or, or whatever, uh, so the water doesn't go everywhere. Obviously bought the two Veneve water stones. One is in the 240 and 400 grit uh, combo stone. And the other one is a combo of 800 and 1200 grit. Um, also bought uh, a jeweler's loop. First time I've ever owned one of these. This one actually has an LED light on it, which is pretty darn cool. Works pretty well. I've checked out some of my edges already with that thing. Um, let's see what else did I get. I got these, I got two also straps and um, these are actually really nice. I got these from Chef Knives to go. They're nice and thick. Um, I've tried making my own before and like I used some really thin balsa wood and what it did is like warped as soon as it got wet, as soon as I put some emulsion on there. So uh, I bought these two, I have two of them and I already put some uh, CBN emulsion on there. And that brings me to my next thing I bought two different things of Ken Schwartz CBN emulsion. I have one micron here and I have 0.1 micron here. So I loaded up both of those uh, on these two balsa straps tonight um, for the sharpening. Um, I also have a strap coming from I Heart Knives. Mike over there is making me a strap with some kangaroo leather for those two emulsions, um, but he's not totally finished with it yet. So that's why I went ahead and threw it on the balsa. So we had something to, to strap on tonight. Um, Mike also recommended that I get some stones to dress the, um, the Neves. So I bought four of these, four different grits, depending on what I'm trying to do. Um, they're silicon carbide stones. It's actually really hard to find these. Um, this is a thousand grit. I think I have 120, 220, 600 and a thousand. So the thousand is basically just going to be obviously for dressing that 1200, just something to either clean it or lap it. Yes, Paul, if I'm strapping on the kangaroo, it's going to move around. I'm, I'm really excited for that strap from Mike. I'm super excited. Um, I have three or four knives put aside here to sharpen tonight. I'm going to start with one that um, I use kind of as a sharpening test knife a lot. And that's my, my little Hogue uh, micro flip. It's in CPM 154, so pretty basic steel. Should be pretty darn easy to sharpen. But um, that kind of gives me a good baseline because I've sharpened that on a lot of different stuff. So let's go ahead and get this uh, 240 and 400 out. So I'm going to start on the 240, obviously. Um, what people have been telling me and what I've kind of gathered is that this 240 doesn't cut super fast. Um, they use a different grit rating than, than other stones. So their 240 is probably closer to like 400 grit. Um, so we're going to see how it cuts tonight. We're going to see, you know, just how fast it reprofiles. Um, if I need to, I will use that DMT course on anything that needs a little bit more reprofiling. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started in on this. Um, they say you can use them dry, but I'm using them with a little bit of water. Running them dry, I think, would make me cringe. So we're just going to go ahead and wet them down a little bit. I also have a stone holder coming, but it hasn't showed up yet from Amazon. 
All this stuff got here really fast, by the way. The emulsions and the um, uh, the balsa straps and the jeweler's loop came from Chef's Knives to go. All the Veneve stuff and the uh, silicon carbide stones came from Gridomatic and they all showed up super fast. So. Already I'm liking the feel of this a lot more than my DMT course plate. And the finish is really, really nice already. It's looking pretty darn good. You can tell it's much more refined. For anyone that doesn't really know, um, these Veneve stones had the diamond particles suspended in the resin. So as you abrade more of the resin away, more of the abrasive comes up, which is actually super cool. Um, and it should leave a somewhat finer finish. Yeah, I like the feel of these already. I'm going to rotate the camera down just a little bit more for you guys. Listen, Paul, I have three sharp, three spider coils waiting to sharpen. I got 4V. I know that one's probably going to be sharpened for sure tonight. I got Rex 45. I'm not sure about that one yet. And I also have Maxima if we get to it. Let's see what this comment says. For the KME a, a long time ago, I like the bonded better. Yeah, I've heard the metallic bonded uh, Edge Pro stones are actually super nice. Um, Steve recommended the metallic bonded uh, stones from Practical Sharpening as well. Um, he said Roman really, really likes them. I looked into them and they're like 200 bucks a pop, so I'm not really into that for right now. Yeah, the, the um, burnt orange on that Rex 45 looks really, really good. Yeah, this is, this stone feels really, really nice, for, especially for being their courses. Do I have a beer to drink? No, I almost stopped and grabbed something on the way home from work, but I decided not to. I figure my hands are a little bit more stable if I'm, if I'm sober. I do have whiskey if I want to, though. Getting a nice scratch pattern going. Obviously, this one is already was already really freaking sharp to begin with, so doesn't gonna, not going to take a lot of work, honestly. Let's take a look here. I like the scratch pattern. I need to work on the tip a little bit more on this one, though. On this side. This is my weaker side. All right. Looks like we're all burnt up all the way along. Scratch pattern looks a lot better out towards the tip. Well, I thought you were going to say that you always drink while you're running your chainsaws, and I was going to be about to be really concerned. <laughs> yeah, I like how that's looking. Let's go ahead and move on to the 400. We're going to pat this dry. A little water here on the 400 grit side. I had a couple people message me today. Um, on Instagram talking about when I posted this on my story. Yes, drink David drinking is for guided systems. It takes no <laughs> you just gotta feel for the burr, that's all. Um I had a few people message me on Instagram today when I put this up on my story that I was gonna be doing this, saying that they didn't like how that 240 cut. Um so I was a little concerned, but it felt like it cut pretty damn solid actually. You're working on mod and a knife BJ?
I can't get over how quiet these are. Oh yeah, I can already tell that that polish is starting to come off off that 400 on that side. Looks really, really good. How's that Sage 2 coming, BJ? I know that, or how'd you like the Sage 2? Have you, is that the first time you've ever handled one? I thought it was. I'll take a look at this thing through the loop. I want to see, make sure I'm getting to the apex. If I can figure out, there it is. Felt like I am, but I'm just going to double check. Oh, yeah. Yeah, David, we've been out on the lake pretty often recently. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. Um, it hasn't been as good as we kind of expected, um, but we've, as far as numbers go, anyhow, um, this time of year we're normally getting, um, I don't know, 20 to 30 fish each a day. And it's been a little slower as so we're only getting five to 10 or so. Um, but normally you have a, a big one or two mixed in there with them, which is, which is nice. No huge ones yet this year. I mean, we've had a couple over five, nothing, nothing pushing six. Normally if you can get one over six, you're having a pretty damn good day. If I get another one, I've had, I got one that's just under six. So if I get one over six, I'm going to have it mounted. Let's go ahead and check this thing out here. Not quite where I want it to be to go ahead and flip. I'm not the greatest at freehand, so this is something I, I'm definitely going to have to work on. One thing I did want to mention here while we're... we got a decent amount of people in here. Um, this was actually partly paid for by my Patreon, which is awesome. So... These two stones are like 80 and $88 a piece. 88 is for the, the more, or the, the higher grit one, the 1200. Um, and I forgot that I had a Patreon. Well, I, I knew I had a Patreon. I just did I forgot that I had funds in there. So I decided to check before I went ahead and ordered these stones. And I, I had just enough to, to almost pay for, for one of these stones completely, which is awesome. So thank you to anyone who has donated to my Patreon at some point. Um, obviously that money goes right back towards the channel and, and stuff like this. So I can provide some info for you guys before you guys make purchases and all that kind of good kind of stuff. So super cool that I was able to do that. What am I dropping my stimulus check on? Um, I actually already spent part of it. Oh, what did it, what did I buy? I know it was a knife. Oh yeah, it was, uh, the K390 PM2 for the last video. So that was one I wanted to, to get for a long time. And that money came through and I decided to go ahead and uh, and pick that up. Really liking it so far. I haven't been able to carry it quite as much because I've been carrying 4V a ton. Um, but I really do like that, that K390. Sharpens up great. Feels great. I don't like the PM2 so much, but... That's all right. If I if I could get it in a Manix, that'd be great. I think that's coming at some point. I, I would have to assume. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends if it's a sprint or if it's an exclusive. Like the the sprint drops kind of suck because they're always all over the place. They kind of drop where they drop when they drop. Like the the Rex Manix. I just so happened to be on Facebook at the right time when one had, it had just dropped. Um, so that was kind of, I got lucky with that one. Not everyone got so lucky. Um, otherwise, for the dealer exclusives, I mean, I'm okay with knowing ahead of time when they're dropping so I can be on the site and, and ready to go, like the like the St. Nick's Manix. Um, I had everything in, all my info in, in their site ready to go i had a, an account made everything all my payment info saved all that good shit and uh so i was in and out in like less than 20 seconds but that thing sold out in like three minutes so um a lot of people were frustrated with that one but i mean i'm cool with the dealer exclusives because 
they give you the the heads up at least for the most part. I like how River's Edge did their exclusive as a. They said it was a pre-order, um, but it really wasn't a pre-order. It was um, basically a way for them to sell them without people going crazy and overloading their site like they did with their uh, pair of three. So if future, come on, I mean, it's kind of confusing because like when they dropped it like that, I thought it was a pre-order. So I pre-ordered it and all of a sudden it shipped like that afternoon. Um, now that people know it's probably not a pre-order and it's actually a real order, I feel like they're going to flock to it next time. We'll see though. But I was cool with the way they, they did theirs. River's Edge, their uh, 10V PM2 did not sell out that fast. It took a couple hours, five or six hours, I'm, I'm pretty sure. The pair of three is what sold out crazy quick. Absolutely. Always going to be another one. And they're always getting better. Always going to be better than the, than the last one. All right. I feel pretty good with, what's up, Steve? I feel pretty good off that stone. So we're going to go ahead and move on. I got, there it is. All right. I'll put that guy to the side. Let me guess, Steve. You're going to say, suck my balls. Yep. Here it comes. Boom. There it is. All right. Size eight hundred. I do like how they have these things marked on the on the outside um, with their micron rating and their grit rating. I know it's backwards for you guys right now because I'm using a front camera, but that is kind of nice. We'll see if those wear off over time though. Eight hundred. Let's go ahead and move on to the eight. Steve, don't you have videos to be making? I'm not sure if these stones are going to require um, a break-in period like some of the other diamond stones do. I'm sure they do for, for a little bit of that binder to wear away and expose some of that fresh diamond. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, the polish that's coming off, off that 800 is crazy. Yeah, I don't think Steve makes videos anymore either. Unless he's talking about Patty. He's basically become an Instagram model at this point. I don't know if you guys can see the polish that's coming up off that 800. Looks really, really good. You did put out two videos in four days, Steve. I was very surprised. Listen, Steve, I remember back in the day when you used to make these sharpening live streams and you had those things popping with like, 80 people watching. Those were fun. Now we just get a video every three months. Take a look through the loop again. <laughs> That's true. It is more like six, isn't it? It's 
It depends. Sometimes you upload a bunch, one after the next. Uh, sometimes you take forever. Looking pretty good through the loop, honestly. Just got to focus on hitting that apex where I'm always afraid of rounding that very apex over. So I get right up to it, but I never quite touch it. That is a micro flip, Steve, with my name on it with my name on it and look my hand covers basically the entire handle look at that look at it. this knife's just too damn small i almost never carry it it looks so big shut up I ought to send it to G to put it in his hands. There we go. I flip, flip that burr back across. G's got Sasquatch hands, though. Or bridge troll hands, as we used to call them. It's feeling pretty damn good. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the, uh, the 12. I do need a Medford. Medford is on my list. I'm kind of scared of Medford, though, because I always hear bad things about customer service and all that shit. And I already had that kind of experience with, with Hinderer, and I feel like they're pretty similar characters between Rick Hinderer and Greg Medford. But I think at, at some point, a Medford is in my future. I want a slim midi um, um, in S90V. The slim midi... And that's 90 V when those dropped at uh, DLT a while back, I almost bought one. Yeah. But Steve, it doesn't look as clean then. Like it, I don't know if I want to round a burr, I, trust me, I can round a burr if I really want to, or I can round the, the apex. I can fuck it up. If anyone can do it, it's me. I'm gonna go ahead and go nice and slow on this 1200. That's kind of what I've been doing. When I'm, when I'm really, really trying to freehand as best as I can, I really just go real slow like this. So I can kind of focus on where I feel like that edge is at. Great polish coming up on this. I'm not really going for a mere polish. So I'm trying to go for best edge I can get off of these. And I'm thinking if these wear, um, like I think they're going to... As I progress, the more knives I do, the better it should be, I hope. The, the better the abrasive should be cutting. We'll see, though. It's kind of cool because on, on this 1200, I don't know if you guys can hear it. I can kind of feel that, that burr flipping on me. All right, burr flipped again. I'm going to try. This is where I suck. This is where I suck. Burr removal. Real light strokes. Grab some silicone carbine powder. So, Steve, actually what I did um, with the advice uh, from Mike at iHeart Knives is I picked up, you, you missed the very beginning, um, I picked up some silicone carbide stones. Um, instead of getting the, the loose powder, he kind of recommended these, and he says he's been doing the, this on his Veneve stones and has been doing great. Um, there's a little one by sixes for the edge pro, I think, um, and silicon carbide. And I've got 120, 220, 600, and 1000. To uh, the 120 is obviously for resurfacing, the other ones are just to kind of to clean them. Yeah, Mike's a beast. I like Mike a lot. 
Mike's making me a, a kangaroo leather strap for for my uh, one and uh, tenth Mike um, CBN emulsions. Oh, really, John? You can take the you can take them apart now. I didn't know that. So that was another thing that was kind of keeping me from from picking them up. That's pretty cool. I did not know that. Do they still use those stupid spanner bits, though? I've seen those pictures, Paul, where there's like four washers on one side and two on the other or something like that. Hey, as long as the knife ends up fucking centered, I guess. <laughs> centered with good action. It don't matter. Pretty soon, I'm almost caught up on everything that I've wanted to test. Pretty soon, I'm going to have people start um, sending knives to me again. I only like to get one or two in at a time so I can test them in a somewhat timely manner and get them back to them. Um, I'm hoping someone sends me a Medford at some point to, to cut test, preferably a Slim Midi, because I'm pretty interested in that one. But then again, I also, I, I've never made a video on it. I feel like I've talked about it on the podcast a couple of times. I feel like I've found my sweet spot for, for knife purchases at, with these Spydercos and some of the Benchmades and stuff. That, I mean, for, for the price point, what you're getting is just, it's so good. Like, the fit and finish may be off a little bit, but you're getting a nice user knife. In, in crazy steals as far as spider co is concerned um, with good warranties for anywhere between a hundred dollars and three hundred dollars um, i've had hinders i've had uh, chris reeves i just I, I never keep knives that expensive for some reason although they're great um and anytime i'm looking at something like that and i get the itch for a crk or, or something i just sit there and i think what what can this do that my three manixes don't or, or something like that. I don't know. I always talk myself out of it. Why are my hands broken, Steve? Please explain to me. Yeah. I mean, there's there's more ergonomic knives. Although I really like the Manix. I'm going to do a video on that. I, I, I ran a... Um, yeah, the Lunar Landing Sabenza. I really wish I would have. I wish I would have picked up one of the crosshatch ones um, back when they were still making those because I really like the crosshatch, and they go for stupid money now. It's not that I I have broken hands, Steve. It's just that I just don't see the value there anymore. I've had them. I think they are doing a thirty-one with the Lunar Landing. I'm pretty sure, Paul. That's one of going to be one of the only. Uh, Graphics that they do on both. The uh, crosshatch they're not, though. All right. I got broken hands. So that's fine. I got tiny hands. And now I got broken hands. Yeah, that, if you can pick up one in a 31, Paul... That's going to be an extremely collectible knife because of um, the fact that it's out in both. Um, they don't do that very often. That that crossover where they do do it in both models, is, especially if you can grab a 21 too and have both of them together, those are going to go for stupid money later.
I'm liking these stones. These feel really, really nice. And these are the biggest stones I've ever sharpened on, big 8 by 3s These are really nice. It's just nice to have that much real estate to work with. Yeah, that feels good. Looks good, too. It's hard to show the polish on on live stream. I know you guys can see some weird white shit up here. That's um, on one of the DMT stones when I was reprofiling it. I got a little too low. Let me see if maybe I got something colorful here. I can bounce that edge back off. I got one of BJ's stickers right here. Kind of hard to do on camera. Try the opposite side. I can't catch the light, right? It looks a lot more mirror in person than what it does right here on camera. This is hard. Yeah, it's impossible. I'll post a picture on Instagram later. That's that's tough. All right, we're going to go ahead and strop it. Um, we're going to go ahead and try, try and start on 4 micron, I think. Somebody yelled at me last time I, I went. I started on 16 right after, even though I don't think it matters. I can't see. Listen, I don't wear a fucking mask. I'm not like Shabazz. Y'all have seen my face. Gotta move this kind of out of the way a little bit. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the 16. A couple passes on the 16 real quick. Just to make sure I'm getting rid of any of that burr. Yeah, I'm excited for those straps from Mike. He's making me a double-sided one, just the smooth um, kangaroo leather. Yeah, this drop is 16. This is 16, Mike. I normally use it as like a, a, a reconditioning for any of my knives that I've been using to try and, um, I mean, it, it's literally a thousand grit, so it basically sharpens. That's what's kept the 4V um, Manix um, going. I've had it for over a month. Yeah, this feels damn sharp already. I'm not sure how well it's deburred. Oh, yeah. There's a little spot right up where the uh, where it starts to get a little bit of belly in the blade. I'm going to work that real quick. What did I say, Paul? I said something about a kangaroo, double-sided kangaroo strap with the smooth kangaroo leather. I don't, did I say something? Still feel a little bit of a spot there. See, I almost bought straps for my Wicked Edge so I could do that for tests instead. Have something controlled angle. I don't know. I get fine results off of just hand dropping. It's not. I got one little spot there. We're going to go ahead and move on. Yeah, I used to use straps on my old KME, and it worked well. But I don't know. I kind of like – I prefer strapping by hand. The least used knife that I still own, that's an easy one, Protec SBR. Protec SBR. I like the knife. Um, I almost always – 
look at it on my nightstand. Like, it sits on my nightstand. I look at it on my nightstand, and I think, that's a badass knife. And I very rarely carry it. Um, and believe it or not, I carried it to work the other day just to kind of show um, a friend of mine that knife because I think it's sick. And I actually used it for the first time. I just hadn't been able to bring myself to use it because I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it or what. But I used it for the first time. And I'm going to be honest, it kind of sucked. It's As far as the user, it's just so thick behind the edge. It's like 27,000 behind the edge on a factory edge. Um, but I just love the design of it so much. I love Les George designs. The, the blade shape is just perfect. I, if I were to design a blade, that's exactly how I would design it. And that's just, I don't know. That's His designs have always spoken to me. That spots out of that, that belly now. So um, now that we got that done, we're going to go ahead and move on to the balsa. Or bass, what I forget what they are. I love my 940. In, in carbon fiber s 90 v man um i'm not sure if it's public knowledge yet so i don't want to go out on a limb and say it um but there's another bench made coming in uh, carbon fiber and s 90 v new one i'm excited for that i might pick it up bj knows about it so i guess it is public knowledge if bj knows about it um i haven't seen it on any sites anywhere yep steve knows it I'm not going to say it. You guys can see it in the chat right now. I don't want to get in trouble. But So this is a uh, balsa or basswood and um, uh, one micron CBM. Yeah, I will use text on a water bottle next time. Yeah, the red accents on that look really, really, really good. I might pick one up. I'm thinking about it. Their S90V is pretty solid. Um, and the Mini Freak's a really nice model, actually. I think I'm going to wait to get one in store before I go ahead and buy one. I really like wood straps, honestly. They give some really good feedback. You can feel when you're right on the bevel because it gets sticky. I know Steve uses fucking paint stirrers. Coming up, sticky sharp. Really, Paul? I, we haven't had those for a while. Those are a, those were kind of cool. They just weren't really my style, but they were neat. Which one's the going gear? There's another going gear exclusive out. Is it a, is it a bug out? I'm not sure. I've seen it. If that's the case. center the red and black um like battle wash one alex already sold that i didn't even know that i fucking hold a post a podcast for the guy and i didn't know that I was honestly surprised when he bought that. It's not really his style. It wasn't custom enough. Yeah, the Going Gear uh, 940 was red and black, I'm pretty sure. Like red with, or black with like the red C-Tech, I think. Yeah, Steve, it wasn't from Russia. I can't believe he hasn't bought these stones yet, being that they're from Russia. I'm going to give him shit on the next podcast about that. All right, 
I got some film book paper here. Looks pretty damn good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not sure it'll whittle a hair both ways, but that is sharp enough for me. I like Hogue CPM 154. It sharpens up very, very nice. Big fan of this stuff. Maybe I can get... Yeah, you guys can kind of see it there. Looking pretty good. Yeah. Hey, man, there's nothing better than that sound. But... So good. Love it. That knife is actually really good. I just wish it was bigger. I'm a big fan of that of Hogue knives in general. And, and that knife is really good. Um, I don't know if it's if I'm supposed to tell anybody or not, but I got that one for free. They ran a program on them, which was super cool of them. The only company that's ever ran a program like that for, for sales associates. So that was pretty cool. Another reason why I like, like Hogue as much as I do. All right, let's move on to something a little bit more difficult, more time consuming. Um, let's go ahead and move. I'm running out of space on my damn desk. My little workbench here. The other thing I liked about these uh, Veneve stones is that they came in like those nice little plastic sleeves, and I can actually hang them on, up on um, my pegboard that sits on the back of my desk. Yes, 4V is next, John. 4V is next. And it's actually my first ever sharpening on 4V, and it's going to be by hand. So pretty excited about this. 4V has been phenomenal. BJ knows. I haven't talked about it yet. I, it's my favorite steel at this point. There's, It's so good. So good. So balanced, it seems like. So this is where I'm gonna kind of figure out if. Um, shut up, Paul. I listen. I've changed it three times in the past year. It was Maxima. It was Crewwear. And now it's 4V. As I try more things, my tastes change. It's just how it goes. You listen. I never said K390 was my favorite steel. I just started trying K390. I haven't had it out in real world use very much yet at all. Um, this 4V actually had a really good bevel on it from the factory, surprisingly. Pretty even both sides for the most part. Um, as even as a spider coat can be from the factory. So we're going to go ahead and sharpen this guy, try and match the factory bevel. Paul, I am out in the real world every day selling knives and other things. The other thing I got to get better at, um, I guess, is figuring out what angle I'm at. Like, I'm good at matching angles, but I have no idea what angle it is. I might have to get one of those little things that Steve's got, the little angle finders. Figure everything out. easy to match what's already there unless it's really really off something else I'm really liking that I didn't expect to I really like this DLC I really do like it looks good it looks good with the knife with the with the uh, red, um, I don't know. It just fits the the knife well, and it 
even though it gets dirty, I like the, the look of the wear. Looks pretty badass. Just missed that comment. Sorry. There you go. What looks super thin? The, the Manix? I haven't measured this one yet. I'm going to have to assume it's around 20 thou. Yeah, it's not the thinnest. It cuts well, honestly. But that's more to do with their edge angle, I think. See, so Steve, I've tried doing uh, the type of sharpening like you and Christy do, where you do like the scrubbing motions up and down. I can't fucking stand that. Like I, I find it so hard to keep an angle doing that. I feel like, I feel like it's so much easier to keep an angle doing these, these sweeping strokes, and I have no idea why. That is true. I, I watch Sean do this kind of stuff all the time, but he uses two hands. I don't mind. So I bought that stone holder. It's not here yet. I want to try. I, I'm better at it holding the stone, honestly, especially coming back towards me. I suck a little bit more going this way. I get a pretty even bevel, but I don't have quite as much feel. Um, I'm going to try and run that stone holder and see if I do a little bit better with it on the table. I'm just trying to remove the scratch pattern here. I mean, I'm, I'm burnt up on both sides. I'm just trying to remove that factory bevel before I go ahead and move on. It's called, cool. it's like the quality look good and everything to you guys. Cause I just have this one light on right next to me. I'm just, I just want to double check. I guess I should have asked that earlier on. Scratch pattern's all gone except for a little bit at the tip. Like I said, normally the tip takes a little bit of extra work for me, a little bit of extra focus. So get this too. So I, I ran into something um, kind of interesting, kind of funny actually. So um, the one day I was cutting some chicken with my, my Manix and it patinaed real easily. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it at all. Um, maybe a little bit kind of towards the tip like the last half of the blade I got some patina on it so I posted on Instagram the other day I, was, I knew I was going to be cutting some chicken I was like some patina's incoming on the uh, K390 PM2 cut the same amount of chicken kind of let it sit there for a couple minutes while I worked with the, the chicken and stuff on the stove and then I just kind of wiped it off with some water real quick no patina nothing I'm a little disappointed in that. I was looking forward to some patina. There'll be other opportunities, but there we go. Pretty much got that scratch pattern out on that side. Just need a little bit more work on the opposite. cranberries huh really i mean i'm not trying to force a patina i want to get it kind of naturally like if the use comes up but i was just kind of surprised how i didn't get any 
patina when I got it on Rex. This is burring up quite a bit larger than some of the other stuff. I know it's, this was probably six rounds, or right around 64, 65. That seems to be where the Mannixes have come in. I wonder if that has anything to do with it being a slightly tougher steel. According to that one commenter the other day, uh, steel this hard is useless. Any steel over 62 or 63 is uh, useless to him in a pocket knife. This should be saved for kitchen knives. struggling to get right out there at the tip. I don't know if I can get this thing to sit up far enough off my, I can't, I can't get it to sit up far enough off the table for me to be able to get my hand under it. Cause I know I can focus the tip a little bit better that way. Try and get my hand up a little bit higher. Yeah, I got one of them holders coming, BJ. I could have waited for it to do this live stream, but I was itching to sharpen with these things all day. I was sitting at work and I almost almost brought it the stones into work with me to, to sharpen with. I decided not to. I wanted to save it for the live stream. See if I can get up a little bit high on this too, because that, that definitely helps. like that it's gone just changing the pressure a little bit changes a lot all right go ahead and move on to the 400 wipe this thing down again i knew it was gonna take a little bit longer on that side just because of the trying to remove the factory bevel doesn't seem like these stones are loading much which is nice I honestly probably don't need this much water either. They just need a, a light misting, it seems like. Just a completely different feel on this 400 side. Just soft. Well, the stone doesn't feel soft, but you just I feel like I get a lot more feedback.
Steve, you tried these, right? You know what I bet the difference is? This is the first stone that has that OCB binder in it and not the, what they call their, um, um, what do they call it? Legacy binder. Legacy binder was like their original shit that was kind of harder, slower to wear. See, Steve, I thought about drinking while, while doing this, but I feel like I lose all my fine motor skills when I do that. Yes, my tiny hands would shake too much. Thank you, Paul. Paul said it much more elegantly than I did. Yo, I do not weigh 97 pounds. Hey, it's not <laughs> not crazy far off of that, but I do. BJ, I already do like them a lot better than DMT. They just have a lot more feel to them. And the edges I get off them, see, or the edges as I'm, I'm coming off the stone just feel crisper. The stone is heavy. Stone is very heavy. Oh, you, oh, you meant than me, dickhead. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. I put on 25 pounds, Steve. Come on. Seems like this is taking off more steel this time. Uh, maybe I'm just seeing a loading from the previous knife too. I'm gonna go out on a limb here, Paul, and say it's me. Probably me. It's hard to tell though, because you only see people's hands. So judging by hands, probably me. Yeah, like how that's looking after that 400. something to set it on top of all right on to the eight so it seems to be that the lighter side is always the um, lower grit the red side is always gonna be the finer one someone else mentioned that in the video i forget who might have been michael Endler. Much as I don't like watching Michael Emler, he had a video on these, so I decided to give him a watch. The only view I've ever given him since Maximit, the Maximit videos. So Steve, is that video going up tonight or what? So what you're saying is I should expect it tomorrow.
Even Gerald has slowed down on his videos, which is really surprising to me. Yeah, Paul. I appreciate you reminding me every time, though. We will eventually get those to each other. Where is mine? It's right here somewhere. I'm not going to share. I don't want to share it, like what I did to it. But you guys see a little bit of it there. There's my rat, too. So the, they, they do exist. It's, it, it does exist. Mods have been done. Shitty mods. But mods. I know Steve is done with his, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait till next Christmas. I don't think I ever got to ask, Paul, how was the Sharp Talk merch that you won? What did you think of the quality? Be, be honest. I, I got a shirt for my own channel. I got a sweatshirt for my own channel. I got a Sharp Talk shirt. I really liked all three of them, honestly. Um, I got two different kinds for the um, the shirts. The Sharp Talk shirt's a lot nicer. You like the hoodie? Good. The, the hoodie's probably one of my favorites. I just don't wear it out too often because I don't want people asking. Because people know. I mean, in my hometown, people know my name and everything. So I don't want people asking, well, what's that? What's that? Well, you got to explain that. I got a... Um, a channel that uh, I just cut fucking cardboard on. Not the easiest thing to explain without sounding like a psycho. Yeah, I don't think I can change the size of the logo on the mug, which kind of sucks. I got a mug here too. Yeah, it's not the greatest mug. I got to kind of work with what they what they give me. Unfortunately. I didn't even know you were in here, Alex. So there, I, I am seeing a little bit of loading here on the on the stone, but it seems like it's, if I push, it just comes right off. Uh, they do have full zips. I can add them. I just didn't add them because I hate full zips. But if that's what you want, I can always add it. They have a shitload of products I can choose from. I get to choose what products and what logo get put on there. And they even got backpacks. Thought about grabbing a Sharp Talker backpack for my channel to take into work. But then again, why? Isn't it funny, Alex? Like, you can't fucking explain that to people. You just look like a weirdo. Like last time I went to go buy cardboard at Walmart, some guy asked me, are, are you moving? And I just said, yeah. It's a lot easier to just say yeah than explain. No, I fucking cut cardboard. And then I, when I had to go get cardboard again, I thought about just going to a completely different Walmart just in case I ran into that same dude. But I just went to the same fucking Walmart. Oh, by the way, we just moved on to the 1200. Dude, if anyone needs to do a cardboard review, it's going to be Steve. Because Steve from the get-go has has got like the... Or Steve or Gerald. Those two have enlightened me on all the different types of cardboard so much. Yeah, dude. I got my, my left arm is missing arm here. I don't got a lot of arm here to begin with. People always ask, well, why, why are you missing arm here? I'm like, yeah, just don't, don't bother. Yeah, you wouldn't understand. But then people say, you know, like, try me or, you know, I, I would understand well, just why. The polish on this 4V is coming up a little bit better still than, than what that CPM 154 did. See, me too, Paul. I can get cardboard for free all the time, but it's not consistent. Like, I can get the same tight, but then sometimes it's dustier than others, so that plays a difference. 
So I, that's why I just went ahead and just started buying it. More consistent. Tests should be more scientific that way. Whatever. As scientific as it can get. What I need to get is a damn best tester, like Alex has, and find a certain cutoff point. That would be scientific. But I'm not sure how, I haven't looked into it that much. I'm not sure how expensive that test media is because I feel like I'd go through a lot. Yeah, sometimes it's a pain in the ass, Paul. That's why sometimes you don't see me post for two weeks or so because you get a little burnout. And you're always cutting cardboard. You're always sharpening knives, especially the long tests where you're like that 10V test where I just sharpened a couple of times, cut it different couple of times. It's a pain in the dick. I, it's so annoying. I don't know how Gerald verifies all of his results. Uh, Steve does too. I, I can't. If I get a result with something, how long have I been hand sharpening? Uh, attempting to hand sharpen, like two years, getting decent at it, like the past six months. Um, did I start with guides? No, I did not. I just kind of found the angles myself and have kind of learned from there. Yeah, that's true, BJ. There is no scientific real-world use. I mean, real-world use and you're changing things up. It's just nice to give it a number. You know what I mean? Like 4V cuts X amount of feet versus Maximet cuts X amount of feet. It's just a number to compare them to so you can kind of see. So you guys wanted me to do like zip ties and shit. And I'm like, I cut thousands of zip ties if, if I wanted to. It's just not going to make it that dull. That is true, BJ. I didn't think about it like that. That's like Catra. Like Catra shit, like it's cool to see those results, but how do I equate that to how I use it on a day-to-day -day basis? That's why I kind of like what, what we do a little bit more because I know exactly how much cardboard I can cut in a one-inch section. One-inch-ish because I don't take mine off. Sometimes it's less, actually. I, no, I think I keep it under a one-inch section most times. <laughs> yeah, right? If, you're, if I'm cutting silica paper, the, the catcher is great. I'm assuming you guys saw it all, but did you guys see Laren's um, test on the 48 different steels? What did you guys think about, about that? I like sharpening these bigger bevel knives. You can kind of feel when they go flat on the stone. That if I get to the max map tonight, which I probably won't, um, that bevel is so small. That that's the reground one. Yeah, Alex, I agree. It is pretty nice to have a base like that to to kind of look at. Well, BJ, you got to think this is this is better than Castro actually what, what they did. Um, I mean, they hand sharpened, or not hand sharpened, they, they sharpened on Edge Pro everything, so it's not the shit sharpeners that Catra uses. The results were pretty cool. It was neat to see that. Um, I don't want to spoil any results, not that it really matters, but if you don't want results spoiled, close your ears. Um, S90V outcut S110V. So I think that's a flaw to me. Something was either harder, um, or something was flawed in in one of those steels for S90V to outcut S110V because on paper that should not happen.
I'm really liking the polish that this 1200 puts on here. Use frozen bagel bites as cut media. I like your thinking. I might do a fucking test like that just to just to be funny. Ooh, that's nasty. That's still got a little bit of burr. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's still some burr there, but it's but it's fucking nasty. That's that's shinier than the last one. Just to me, hey, some of those guys would really enjoy that. So that's right off the stones. So this 1200, because they use a different grit scale, is actually probably closer to like a 4K, like the Spyderco Ultrafine. So it should be a pretty comparable level of polish. Let me, just like the last one, just a couple, couple swipes here on a 16 mic just to make sure we're removing any burr that's there. Cut into that tube, yeah. See, I don't do that. I'd rather remove the burr the good way. <laughs> Roll of aluminum foil. How many feet of aluminum foil can I cut before my edge is dead? All right. One little spot. You think I can only cut six feet of aluminum foil, huh, BJ? I think we could cut a lot more than that. Does it shave off of the 16 mite? Oh yeah. That feels nasty. Will it cut? It should cut this. Yep. The only thing I, I feel like it doesn't have as much bite off of that 16 micron for some reason. Never liked the edge finish off that 16 micron. good to me got that spot that i was kind of concerned about never tried nano cloth there actually is a sharp talk discord paul there actually is um if you want in it there's only a couple of us in there i mean i can i can post it on our instagram and see if maybe more people want to join but there actually is one Discord's fun. That'd be a lot of fun, actually, if we could get enough people in there. Like, we get a lot of listens, honestly. Um, so I don't know how many people of those would be inclined to be in a Discord, but that'd be pretty badass, actually. That'd be a lot of fun. You are number one fan. That's why I'm glad you won the merch. I feel bad for BJ because, like, when I put... Um, those numbers into the generator B pj was number six and it automatically like it didn't generate a number yet that was just the number that it had like, it had uh six in there so i just thought that was funny i felt bad for for you bj because of the way that looked the shirts do run tight huh which one did you get did you get like the nicer like performance one or did you get like the the less expensive one i can't remember right i or did I buy that? I bought the shirt. Yeah, I bought the shirt. I think I got you the performance one. I'm pretty sure. Because because I didn't like how the other ones fit. 
The other ones did run very tight. Wish I had long enough hair here to attempt to whittle it. All right, that's through the four. Looks good on the four. I'm gonna have to try some of that micro uh, or that nano cloth, BJ. I really thought about grabbing one or two of those when I was buying all this shit. All right, here's one micron balsa, basswood balsa. I forget what it was. Either way, it's soft. It's extremely light. I think it's balsa. Pretty sure. I'll wipe this thing down real quick. Um, good question, Paul. Because I don't want to. The screws in this Manix are not loose. Dude, this thing is still tight. Like, it, it drops. Um, but it's very slow, which is what like how I like it. My Rex is a little bit different. Does this... Okay, let me see if you guys can hear this. So listen to the 4V. Listen to the Rex. Those two tones or those two tones sound completely different to you. Do those sound completely different? By the way, BJ, these these screws have stayed super tight. Normally, I see some loosening, like I did with the Rex. I did with my crew wear. My crew wear saw a lot. I guess they just drops. I guess I haven't checked the body. They aren't backing out. So. All right. Up to the one micron on, on the wood. They do sound different. I'm not crazy then because that Rex just sounds hard. And I know the one came in at like 67, which I think might've been the hardest Rex that they've done, that they've tested. But they, that one just sounds hard. I told Kurt that I'm going to send that one in to have it tested. Eventually I'm going to send in a bunch at one time and just commit to carrying one of my knives a little bit, probably one of the Maximate ones. Or just, I'm probably going to send that S90V 940-1 in because I'm curious what their hardness is on those. I don't know if those have been tested yet. God, I really like dropping on wood. I just like the feedback. Getting sharper. Getting much sharper, actually. Yeah, me too, PJ. I hope they don't get lost. Maybe I'll just send one at a time. <laughs> I forgot about that. I was feeling pretty confident about sending all those to Kurt until you said that. You just stopped by now already, Paul? What do you, uh, at, uh, probably after that 16 mic, right? It's good enough after that 16 mic. I just like all this. Yeah, I probably will fully insure it. I mean, it doesn't hurt, right? Yeah, normally if, if I'm using, if it's a user knife, I only take it to, uh, when I'm sharpening on the Wicked Edge, I only take it to 1,000 grit, and that's like a true one grit. It's not like this thing where it's actually like 4,000. And um, only stop at the 4 micron on leather, which is, I mean, that's all I had up until recently. So up until all this crap came in, which is plenty. The thing that I've heard with USPS, though, is even if you do insure it, that they're a pain in the ass to get a, a payment out of. See, namaste new. That's what I've heard. That's why I'm afraid to spend the extra money on it.
UPS if you're looking for a payout lot. Huh? That is true, BJ. I don't think they consider that though. Because the value is the value on the outside of the package, because it really shouldn't be if that's the case. Because otherwise, how does the carrier know? Oh, yeah, that thing's stupid. I wish I had a better test meeting. I got paper towels, I guess. I normally can't get them to cut like this. Hard for me to get it to cut like that. I mean, I got the bounty ones, the thick bitches, that I can get them to cut. Pretty happy with that. You really can't get too much better than that, honestly. I just don't know the best way to hold it. You know, for if I'm trying to get it to cut, like free hanging. I ain't, I ain't Roman. I can't. My edges ain't that sharp. I mean, they're sharp, but not like. Not like that. Let me try. I think I'm gonna stop here um, with the 4V. I'm gonna try the, the standing foam book paper test. Leave on paper towel roll, pull out tension, then get, good idea. That's what I kind of do when I fold it, like I did. Like I, I kind of grab it like this and roll them. And then cut from the top like this. That's normally what I do. I'm going to try that standing uh, phone book paper thing where you just fold it and try and cut straight down. Let's see if I got enough room here. I'm just excited to be able to live stream again. Because I, I used to do it with the Maximus stuff. And um, then they changed the requirements to stream from your phone to have to be, you had to have a thousand subs. So I was like, well, fuck, there goes that. So now that I have over a thousand subs again, I can start doing this a little bit more often. So I, I've had a decent amount of you guys in here throughout most of this. Uh, no, I don't use an external mic. I'm just using the front uh, front camera, which I think is where the mic is located. So it sounds a lot better. Same thing I've been doing for my videos recently. I, I have the same camera angle. Um, try to whittle a pit. <laughs> I'm trying to whittle a ball here. Maybe that'll work. Do the opposite way. Let's see. Now, this is always tough to do. I'd say that's pretty damn good. Sounds pretty, that looks pretty damn good to me. I'm pretty happy with that. That's gonna be honest. That is nastier than than um, some of the edges I've gotten off the wicked edge. The wicked edge is kind of hard to to deburr on sometimes without those sweeping strokes. Um, I've never been too happy with it as far as in that regard, especially on the higher carbide stuff. Um, it kind of struggles with when you're trying to do those those sweeping motions. It, and getting those the scratch pattern faces forward and i don't know it just doesn't cut that well but i did it on these two because even though 10v and k390 are um high carbide they're really really fine grained and these came out screaming sharp i don't know if they're quite like that 4v is maybe and yeah maybe that's why it looks better too because that 4v is so damn nice but that 10v or that 10v came out really really good too yeah, that's kind of why I miss my KME in that regard. It was easier to deburr. Uh, oh, get you some fucking Veneve stones. You, you saw what I just did? I suck at free. Well, I don't suck, but I'm not good at freehand. Uh, but yeah, get you some fucking Veneves, man. That's nasty. 
I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know if you guys can see. I'll put pictures up on Instagram later, but that polish was really, really nice too. It looks really, really good. I'm really happy with these. Best money I've spent on um, sharpening equipment in a long time, probably since the Wicked Edge. And, and who knows if I like these enough. Um, what do you mean there's no... Oh, you mean... Yeah, because you don't want to buy from the commies? Mm, who would be a USA equivalent of these? You would... Like, okay, so this is the way that Sean explained it, is that the Russians are extremely advanced on abrasives and steels, um, so they're probably going to be your best bet. Try practical sharpening. Um, they're going to be a lot more expensive. Uh, I don't know where they're made, though. I don't think they're in Russia. Um, these are resin bonded. The um, practical sharpening are metallic bonded or a little bit different. Uh, I think those were start were around... <laughs> yeah, they are abrasive. Uh, the metallic bonded ones were starting at like 180. So those were expensive. These were 81 and 88 dollars a piece. So the the more the finer the grid is, the more expensive it is. Yeah, I'm really happy with these. Um, the wicked, I don't know. I don't want to say it for sure, but the wicked edge might be going. Might might have to go after seeing this. Uh, I'm have to try it on some other steels first to. Make sure. Maybe 4V is just making me look really good. But, yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. Very, very happy. So, I think I'm going to call that a night, boys. I got uh, at work in the morning. That's been my work night for the past month or so. So, I had to get that thing sharpened up, even though it didn't really need it. It was still going strong after a month of use. Make sure I'm putting the stone back in the right pouch here. 800, 1200. Yes, sir. Um yeah, see, it was a lot of fun talking to all you guys throughout all this. Yes, BJ, I can send the Wicked Edge your way. I can. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't see why not. I mean, it's it's a big package, but hey, I don't, I don't mind. You guys try that thing. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, for joining in on this podcast or the podcast. Wow, I'm so used to being live on the on the podcast. Thank you guys for watching and tune in to watch me sharpen here. Um, a lot of fun with you guys. I plan on doing this a little bit more often. If you guys enjoyed that, um, check Instagram for some better pictures on the polish. Uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it. So good night guys.